to this and more later on this episode before we start i just want to give a huge shout out to everyone that subscribed and helped us reach 5,000. to everyone that's not subscribed if you're enjoying this content it's completely free and you can keep up to date with everything to do with the canucks with that let's hop straight into the first topic which this may be exactly what they needed now if you've been following social media at all you did see jeff patterson came out and said there was a testy exchange between jt miller and elias patterson at canucks practice which happened yesterday end of the battle drill two chopped at each other and the miller delivered a quick cross check few words were exchanged wasn't any bigger than that but definitely looked like some heat griffin looking at this from the outside someone that wasn't a part of the exchange what's your initial thoughts on seeing a report like this i think it's a little surprising coming out of a team like this where we don't really have drama like this where we're having fights at practice but in a case like this where it's been well documented and even on the Vancouver Canucks social media with a promo that they did recently showcasing JT Miller, how much he expects the best out of everybody, almost like a captain would. He's kind of been like our secondary captain next to Quinn Hughes, where he's that older veteran that has the leadership mentality with him and he just wants the best out of anybody, everybody. And he is that ultimate competitor where when they lose, he takes none of the credit and when they, or he takes all the blame, sorry, when they lose and when they win, he takes none of the credit that's what you want out of a leader and I think in a season where Petey's had taken a little bit to get going he's coming off of last season as well where yes Petey's been getting assists but he hasn't gotten many any goals yet so I think this is something where JT Miller just wants to get him going maybe this is something where we see the lotto line reunite maybe they put JT Miller and Elias Pedersen on a line together to see if that can jumpstart something maybe with this carrying over from practice definitely throw them on a line together see if they can jumpstart something get each other going maybe there's a little bit of tension that they can apply and just take out on the opposing team where they're not doing it against each other doing it against the team their opposing team and i think the fact that coaches didn't have to step in i think they just let the players do their thing and just let them say hey work it out between yourselves we're not going to step in we know that you guys are grown men and you can do this yourselves and the biggest thing is we've seen pd come out and he had a uh, quote as well he said yeah it's good i think you should have practice with an edge yeah it's good and this was him talking about the test exchange between him and jt miller the biggest thing with this we've seen a guy like garland and dakota joshua almost have an exchange like this last year they formed together and made the best third line in hockey and quite frankly they made the best line in hockey whoever they played with he did exchange just this early on in the season shows that both of these players care they want to fight through this we're seeing a guy like jt miller have a hot start to the year three goals three assists for six points during his first six games with the canucks a guy like elias Pettersson is struggling a tiny bit he did get going during the chicago game but pd knows he needs to get the standard up a guy that signed a big contract that a lot of fans are not too pleased about right now Getting Petey back at the level he is, a guy that could put up 102 points, which we've seen just from two seasons ago, putting up 39 goals and 63 assists. Petey wants to get this edge going. Petey has been trying to get this edge back. We've seen it in the Chicago game. This heated exchange shows that he cares. If he did not care of him and he didn't have a fiery will under him, he wouldn't have done anything. He might have just backed off. Maybe he didn't even do anything. But this team cares. This is a team that struggled and wants to continue. But we also see this team did struggle to start the year. But now, thanks to guys like JT Miller, guys like Connor Garland, guys like Kevin Lankinen, who has been a savior, the Canucks are still third in the Pacific we see him with eight points just behind the Golden Knights and the Calgary Flames who should just kind of flame out at some point this is a team with new faces new bodies new everything getting these guys going is the biggest thing for this team and we've seen Rick Tockett talk about it as well but there's time and a place where you want to challenge the pace of the practice or there's certain drills someone doesn't like or whatever that's part of the game it's not a big deal and this was talking about him not wanting his players to fight i'm sure if there's a scrum or something on saturday night millsy would be the first guy to jump in for pd seeing this does this make it a little easier griffin maybe looking at it from the outside and just being like hey rick tockett knows that these guys will stick up for each other at all and this competition might make it even better yeah, absolutely. I think Tockett, having been in the NHL himself, he's been in practices like this. He knows what it's like to play on a team where 
things get heated where expectations just aren't being met. And sometimes you need your other teammates to get you motivated, to get you going. That's why you have your teammates. No one can do this all on their own. They need the support of their teammates. They need the motivation of their teammates. And sometimes you need a little bit of tough love and talk. It recognizes that. And like you said, if there's a scrum on Saturday night, Milty going to be the first one to jump in there for sure, because that's the kind of guy he is. We've seen how he goes after guys for retribution on just little ones. So if it's a guy like Petey, who's getting messed with, you can bet your bottom dollar that JT Miller is going to be in there and he's going to get revenge. He's going to get retribution because that's the kind of guy he is. He doesn't care if he has to take a penalty or even get tossed from the game. We saw him just drop the gloves in earlier in this season before the end of a period where he said, you know what? I don't care if I have to sit out the rest of the period. I'm ready to just drop him right here, right now and just settle it. And that's the kind of player he is. That's why we love having him on this team. He knows when it's the right time to do that. And I think if that happens on Saturday night, he's definitely going to do it. But for these guys to have a practice like this, I think this is exactly what the Canucks do need as far as just coming together more. We saw how they came together on this road trip. Things are starting to click. And if this is one of the things that just sets things in motion, I think that's definitely going to be the match that lights the fuse. And even looking at this team, I know a lot of people are a little concerned with the team, but this is a team without Thatcher Demko. This is a team with new faces. Kiefer Sherwood is coming in and looking like a star. We're seeing guys like Denton Hyman, Jake DeBrusque that still need to get going, a guy like Daniel Sprong who has been struggling. All these new faces and the Canucks are still third in the Pacific and they very well could be top in the Pacific or top in the West, how things are going. But what are you guys' thoughts on the heated exchange? Is this something you're excited that happens? So maybe these guys will kick into the next gear and really focus on the next few games. And maybe this sparks something. Like you said, maybe the lotto line comes back and these guys finally unite and start potting points together. But with that, let's hop straight into the second topic, which is the Canucks make multiple roster moves. Now we do look at this Canucks team and they do make some moves this is from the Vancouver Canucks PR general manager Patrick Alvin announced that Derek or sorry defenseman Eric Brandstrom and forward Archie Baines has been assigned to Abbotsford now looking at this I think with these moves we've seen Baines look good during his games he had some struggles he's still a young player that needs time in the AHL but a guy like Brandstrom was really just kind of shocking for me having a guy like Brandstrom come in be the puck moving defense when they need it a guy that could clear the neutral zone put pucks on net i mean we've seen it in the intro video this is a guy that had a clapper on the net that set up a goal setting brandstrom down was a little confusing and it does make me think maybe this is just with Derek forber come back they still have noah Juleson. both of these guys would have to clear waivers but griffin looking at how brandstrom played in these two to three games that he was in would you be shocked if he got back up on this canucks roster before the end of the season I wouldn't be shocked at all. I think that this is just a matter of, hey, Forbert's a guy that you paid more. You're not paying him that much to just play in Abbotsford all season. So it makes sense that he is probably coming back soon. And that's why this move happened. And in the meantime, you can throw Noah Juleson in there or just shuffle things around in, until Forbert does come back. But I think eventually we are going to see Branstrom come back in there. I think he was very solid in the appearances that he has had this season. I think he's definitely one of those puck moving defensemen that Vancouver definitely does need, especially when we have a second unit pairing where Carson Soucy and Tyler Myers, they aren't getting the production that we need out of them. So I think Eric Branstrom could not only find himself back on this Canucks roster at some point this season and playing, I think he could find himself on that second pairing again as well, because I think that this is a defensive unit where aside from the top pairing, anything could go as far as shuffling things around and seeing what could stick. So I think he definitely presented a lot of potential and a lot of upside as far as what he could do on this Canucks roster. And I think if we see him on this team again in the end, uh, by the end of the year, I won't be surprising. I think what would be surprising if he makes it onto that second pairing. But again, I'm hoping he does because I think he's something that is going to be something to watch later on. And even a guy like Baines, I do think will get called up at some point. Maybe it's at the end of the year. Maybe if it's more injuries that happen. But Brandstrom's a guy that I'd love to see on this team. And I'd almost love to see him to be in games every two to three games especially with matchups where you need to clear the zone where you need a better puck mover what would you guys thoughts on these moves what's your thoughts about Brandstrom and Baines being sent down are you excited for Forbert to come back or would you rather see Brandstrom get more of an extended look let us know down in the comments but speaking on comments we'll hop into everyone's favorite topic which is comment of the day 
The comment of the day comes from APLL4818, and they say, can't wait to see how far they go this season. And honestly, this could be a season the Canucks make another deep run. They only lost in Game 7 to the Edmonton Oilers due to injuries. I think this is going to be another deep year, and I'm quite excited. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to go and leave a like or subscribe, you can go down and do that below. While you're down there, leave a comment, and you could be featured on Comment the Day while you're down there. But I've been your host, Mark, with my co-host, Griffin. Take care.